Five years ago this week, I began my first term as your state representative. And I had no idea what to expect. I was the fourth youngest elected official in state government at the time. And I will admit that during my first few months, I got lost in the parking garage at the state capitol more times than I'd like to admit. And one day, the Speaker of the House actually thought I was a student from the Ken McMillan High School Championship Baseball Team instead of their state representative. These are the growing pains that any young legislator goes through, and they were valuable learning experiences. But you all had faith in me and supported me in ways you probably don't even realize. And I knew I would have to learn the ropes quickly if I was going to effectively represent the people of this district. You know, one of the things you will have to decide when you get to Harrisburg is what kind of philosophy will you embrace to get things done? Some people are deal makers, always negotiating behind the scenes. Others cling to lobbyist coattails and get by on slick talking points that may sound pretty but don't really mean anything. Still others take the safe route and do everything in their power to avoid drawing any attention to themselves in the name of self-preservation. As those of you who know me might suspect, none of those models seem to suit me very well. And before I knew it, I was throwing myself headfirst into a knockdown, drag out brawl with a local sewage authority on the behalf of my constituents. But I learned a very important lesson from that battle. The voice of the people is often lost in our system of government, where self-interest and special interest are a disproportionate part of the equation, and the right thing to do is often just tossed aside or quietly buried in the hope that people are too uninformed to notice and the representatives are too willing to silently accept the status quo and become part of the problem rather than part of the solution. So I realized I had to do the only thing that felt right to me, and that was fight like crazy for the people I represented, because I truly believed that if I didn't do it, nobody else would. So it wasn't easy and it wasn't pretty, but we finally prevailed on that project and we put over $2 million back where it belonged, which was directly in the pockets of the people who had been forced to pay an outrageous tap and fee for the privilege of basic infrastructure. And it's a good thing that experience taught me how to fight for my constituents because we had no concept of the battles that would soon come. Since the beginning of my time in office, we've been experiencing the boom of natural gas drilling in the Marcellus Shale. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. I am not opposed to natural gas drilling. I'd have to be crazy not to see the economic impact on the region, from job creation to landowner royalties. But the way the state is approaching this industry right now is just wrong. Nearly a year ago, I assembled a group of local government officials from 18 municipalities to form Pennsylvania's first ever Marcellus Municipal Co-op, so communities could learn and work together to find reasonable solutions. The members of the co-op, many of whom are here today, volunteered their time and became well-educated and well-informed. We held public meetings and hearings on issues, and we never allowed politics to interfere with our common goal of doing right by the people we represent. But it has become clear to me that despite some of the fancy commercials, some of the companies doing business in our backyards want to eliminate all local control and by extension all local accountability when it comes to major issues that have a real and permanent impact on me, you, and all of us. The people who were here before the Texas license plates rolled into town, and God willing will still be here whenever they leave. Now the House and the Senate are currently debating these issues, and although the money and the lobbying and the intimidation are intense, this is a battle worth fighting. Everyone says to me, we need to do this the right way. Well, I'd like someone to explain to me why, if we're sitting on a lifetime's worth of natural gas, why do we have to put a well 250 feet from our kids' schools? Why is it necessary to allow a compressor station that's going to be running nonstop for 60 years to be 750 feet from somebody's home? And why would these companies be able to, why should they be able to do these things with less oversight than you would need if you want to build an addition onto your garage at home? These are the issues that will truly impact us, and anyone who isn't willing to stand up and defend the community they live in 
surely isn't worthy of the honor of representing that community. Now, another fight worth winning is the battle reform the property tax reassessment system. Now, I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but I've been working with the Washington County Commissioners, Allegheny County Executive-elect Rich Fitzgerald, my colleagues in Harrisburg, particularly my neighbor, Representative Brandon Newman, who's here today, to fix a system that is horribly broken and inherently unfair to taxpayers. Despite what a few school board members and their overpriced lawyers might think, our tax dollars are not their personal piggy bank to be raided at their convenience. Yeah. <laughs> now, two years of hard work should be coming to fruition very soon. And just to show I'm not blowing hot air on this, I'm leaving from here to go directly to Harrisburg for a reassessment of reform task force meeting first thing in the morning. These battles are not just worth fighting, but they are worth winning. And luckily, I have a first-rate staff by my side every single day. And I want to thank them for all their hard work and dedication. A round of applause. Angela Wade, Kim Nielsen, J.D. Vega, Nick Garrett, Dominic Lemon in Harrisburg, and the newest addition to our staff, Zach Hill. I also would be remiss if I didn't thank Judy Vitek, who had recently retired after running my Kent Township office for nearly five years. There is no other group of people I'd rather have in the trenches with me. Now, there's a very different kind of battle looming on the horizon for me. As a result of the legislative redistricting process, there is a high probability that I will no longer represent much of the area I've covered for the past five years. And in a matter of weeks, the lines of my district will likely shift dramatically, taking in much more of Allegheny County and much less of Washington. Now this redistricting process is something I have almost no control over. In fact, the district is being cut in a way that could easily have me running against another incumbent legislator in a couple of months. And that's something that hasn't happened in Pennsylvania in decades. So to those of you I may no longer represent, I want to thank you for the honor and the privilege of serving you. Even if I may not technically still be your representative, my door will always be open to you. And I'm proud of our many accomplishments but wish we could have had more time to finish what we started together. But I'm a grown-up, and I realize that change is an essential part of life. So to those of you who I may be representing for the first time in the near future, I look forward to proving myself worthy of your support and friendship. The issues may be slightly different, but I can guarantee you will never have a reason to question my work ethic, my enthusiasm, or the passion for what I do. Now, the next several months will be stressful and hectic. And to be honest, I'm really not entirely sure how it's going to all turn out. All I know is that I've still got a lot of fight in me and way too much left unaccomplished to give up just because some lines on a map may have changed. I'm running for re-election next year, wherever my district may lie, and I will work harder than ever before to overcome whatever obstacles are thrown my way. So let me end by saying this. Thank you for your unwavering support over the past five years. Thank you for your continued support in whatever the future may hold. I honestly can say that there is no way I could have done it without you. Thank you very much. We are gonna start pulling the remainders of the